Okay, I want to um, tell you a little bit more about rotational dynamics. This is rotational dynamics part two. It's going to be a little shaky, this camera right now, because it's off the stand. But if you take a look, um, I, there's a ball on an inclined plane. And if I hit run in this program, watch what happens. It rolls down the inclined plane. It has an alpha. Okay, now I'm going to reset. And I'm going to um, go in here and take away friction. So I'm going to make I'm going to make friction zero. Bear with me here. Okay, the friction is zero. Now watch happens to the ball. Watch watch how the ball goes down the inclined plane. What do you guess? I'll run that over. Hopefully you're seeing. But the ball doesn't rotate at all. It just goes straight down without rotating. If I were to put friction back on, it does rotate. You might go back and take a look at that. Bear with me while I put this on the stand and get this set up here. Take away this. All right. Whoa. Excuse me. Um, all right, so I want to take a look at that, the physics of a ball rolling down an inclined plane. Obviously, it was the friction that provided the torque, because when we took away the friction, there was no torque on the ball. The ball did not have any alpha. So let's see how that works. If we have um, an inclined plane, like so. And there's a ball on there. Let's say it's a, a sphere. So I for a sphere if you look at your if you go ahead and, and look at your table you'll see that it's two fifths MR squared if it's if it's solid. A solid sphere is two fifths MR squared. That's what I is. Again, we will be calculating these shortly. Okay, if I were going to draw all the forces on the ball, I, I need to draw the forces where they actually occur now. So the force of gravity, um, I'll put through the center of mass, and that acts straight down. So that's mg. Um, the force... Uh, the normal force acts straight at the where the two surfaces are, and it goes right perpendicular to the to the two surfaces, right through the center of mass. And then there's one more force. If there's friction, the frictional force is um, that way. And so, um, if you see, this doesn't put any torque. This force right here puts no torque on the ball because, look, it's going right through the center of mass of the ball. So it's not putting any torque on it. And nor is the normal force. The normal force puts no torque. So the only force putting uh, a torque on it is the force of friction. So let's apply Newton's second law um, in rotation. Alpha equals the net torque... Now the net torque um, is just going to be the force of friction times um, the lever arm. So the lever arm in this case is the R of the ball. So alpha equals the force of friction times R. And then we got to divide not by M. A doesn't equal F net over M here. Alpha equals net torque over I. And I is going to be um, two-fifths MR squared. Okay, now you might wonder, um, does what about um, Newton's second law in linear motion? Does this still apply even though the ball rotates? And the answer is yes, it still applies. So A of the center of mass, if I put center of mass there, that will equal the net force on the ball. Now the net force on the ball in the x direction is mg sine of theta minus the force of friction all over m. 
uh, you know, if I if I break the mg into if this is theta and I bring this down, this is a right angle, so this is 90 minus theta. And so that makes um, this equal to theta again. So this is mg cosine of theta. Can you read that on there? I don't know. And this is mg sine of theta. So the net force in the x direction is mg sine theta minus the force of friction all over m. So both of these those things apply. Now they do link up. So yeah, you may think that these are totally independent of one another, but we have a bridge equation to go between these two. So the bridge equation says that alpha is the same thing as, um, well, we could say that um, A is equal to alpha times R. So I could solve alpha for, solve for alpha. Alpha is equal to A over capital R. And I can bring that down and put that here. So A over capital R is equal to the force of friction times R. Divide it by two fifths mr squared. So there's a whole bunch of cancellations that can happen at this point. We can cancel this r with that r. We can cancel one of these with one of these. And so, um, and we can probably do some other cancellations over there. Now, given uh, mu, we could get we could probably get the acceleration of this object. Well, certainly, if we got if we if you just gave me mu, I would be able to tell you the acceleration because it's going to be mg cos. This is going to be uh, mu times the normal force. Now, the num normal force is mg cosine of theta because it's got to equal this force. This force has to equal this one. Those are identical forces, um, in magnitude at least. And so mu times mg cosine of theta um, all over 2 fifths m equals a. And we can get rid of the m. And so you see we're, we're getting very close to a. So that's how you do the physics of a ball rolling down an inclined plane. Uh, you can, you, you just have to see that the force that's causing the torque in that case is the force of friction. All right, that's all I have for you.